Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how to do the reduction of alkynes three different ways and it's extremely important to understand the difference uh, among those three different uh, methods. So let's talk about hydrogenations and the presence of a metal catalyst. So suppose if you have a alkyne, and I'm going to just take an uh, example of an butyne there, uh, if I do this reduction in the presence of just hydrogen, and uh, some metal catalyst that could be either nickel or platinum. So the first step is going to be the formation of this alkene. So I can go ahead and uh, change the color if I want here. So there's still going to be a, a double bond. And uh, if I go ahead and change the color of this H2, then this H2 these two hydrogens would be added syn, just like you would have seen in case of alkenes. But this is going to be the intermediate, and usually it's not observed, and that's because this reaction cannot be stopped at the alkene. As a result, you will have the second H2 addition will being taken place, and at the end of the day, you will have an alkane made. So that's going to be your and product. So usually this one is not going to be observed. Even if you are very careful with the equivalency of how much hydrogen you're adding, there is still going to be a chance you will have a mixture of this alkane and alkene made, even alkene made, even if you run out of hydrogen there. So it's not a very sufficient way of making alkenes from the alkynes. Anytime you have to use H2 in the presence of metal, it will take it all the way to an alkane. So the question is, how do I really stop this reaction at an alkene? So there are some other ways you can do so. So let's take an example of um, the same reaction with some other reagents. So if I want to stop this reaction at an alkene, I would have to use a so-called a poisoned catalyst, and the poisoned catalyst you will have you will be using some other uh, metal in there. And one of the examples is the Lindlar's catalyst. So a lot of times you may see um, the reaction just writing the Lindlar's catalyst, and your Lindlar's catalyst will be using a palladium metal with a um, combination of CO. CaCO3 with the traces of PbO2, and obviously you're going to have the hydrogen there, and that's going to be all combined, it's going to be called a Lindlar's catalyst. The other one that can be used is going to be a nickel boron complex, so it's going to be Ni2B, uh, so that's just in a nickel boron complex, and also that's also called in a P2 catalyst. Uh, but you're, the most common one that you're going to be seeing would be the Lindlar's catalyst in there. Now, what this really does, it's going to be stopping the formation of, uh, stopping the reduction at alkene. But most important, it's actually going to be making the cis alkene. So it's extremely important to know when you're making cis alkene and when you're making uh, the trans alkene and stuff like those. Okay, so in, and then it will not do the formation of alkane. And if you have to go and make the alkane from there, you would have to use a regular H2 with platinum catalyst. Okay, the third one, the third reaction that's going to be um, carrying the reduction would be the sodium metal used dissolved in uh, ammonia. So let's talk about uh, that. I can have. Na with liquid ammonia. Now you don't want to get confused with this with NaNH2. So remember the NaNH2 was used to kind of uh, deprotonate the alkyne to make alkyde uh, and that could be used as a nucleophile. This one is a little bit different that this is a sodium metal used in a liquid ammonia and what it does it's going to be making the alky alkenes as well but the good thing about this, it actually makes it a trans alkene. So instead of making it a cis alkene, it would have a trans alkene made in there. So that's the key difference between those three different types of uh, uh, reductions. So, so at the end of the day, suppose I'm using uh, 
as an example, suppose I'm using this alkyne here, so I'm going to take an example of maybe um, two pentyne there, and then I can go ahead and do one reaction where I use a Linlarge catalyst. So if I use a Linlarge, I'm going to be end up making a cis alkene, or another way of saying in this case, you can also call that Z alkene. And then if I use sodium metal when liquid ammonia, that's going to be making the trans alkene. And obviously, if I go ahead and use H2, with just regular nickel or uh, platinum that's going to end up making alkynes uh, that's going to end up making alkenes uh, at the end of the day so it's going to make uh, pentane there so then the question is if i want to go ahead and make those uh, uh, reactions like if i want to go ahead and make this at the end of the day and the same story if i want to go ahead and make that at the end of the day I would have to use an H2 um, separate to do that because those other reactions will stop at the alkenes. And it's extremely important to know when you're making a trans alkene versus a cis alkene. And these are the most three important uh, reductions that you're going to have to know. You don't have to really know the mechanisms. And as far as the story chemistry go, we talked about how you're going to be making the cis and trans alkenes using poisoned catalyst in liquid ammonia metal uh, sodium met with sodium metal and as far as your your just regular reduction goes with the metal catalyst this doesn't really have even though it's a same addition we know that it, it does this in addition but uh, even though it's a same addition at the end of the day your alkane is not going to be chiral so you don't have to worry about the stereo chemistry there so this is how it's going to look like if you have any questions feel free to leave any comments in the section below